Hi guys. So as I mentioned in a previous video, I got Kimberly Porter, um, her autopsy and this is it. It's a bunch of pages. It took longer than they said it was going to take. So I'm sorry. I was hoping to have this information in time for my video, but it just seemed like it, I wasn't going to get it. And I thought they decided they didn't want to send it to me. And I just was like, all right, it's never going to happen. And then I found it in the mail. Here we have the investigators narrative. And they say that their in information sources are the detective Patike and um, Michael Farzam MD. So it says investigation on November 15th, 2018 at 13.05 hours, officer Villanova from LAPD North Hollywood division called case loan at the LA County department of medical examiner coroner to report this apparent natural death. It was reported that the decedent was found unresponsive bed by family members. That's how it's written. 911 was dialed and death was determined at the scene. There was no known medical history other than recent cold flu like symptoms for the past few days. An in house physician prescribed antibiotics and IV fluids. There was no known history of drugs or alcohol use. PMD Michael Fardum. And then up here it says Farzum. So I don't know if that's her like doctor that came to her home. I'm not sure. I was assigned this field called by Lieutenant Smith on the 15th of November, 2018 at approximately 13, 16 hours. I arrived on scene at approximately 14, 10 hours and departed from the scene at approximately 16, 33 hours. Foul play is not suspected. The decedent's fingerprint return and a routine search of the Los Angeles County Consolidated Criminal History Report System revealed no drug or alcohol related offenses. Forensic attendant M. Sierra and cor coroner investigator trainee L. Darabedian transported the decedent from the scene to the Forensic Science Center. And then it says informant slash witness statements. I spoke with Detective Petike at the scene and he related the following information. The decedent lived in the residence and the above location with her two minor children as well as with her friend and friend's daughter. The decedent's goddaughter, who was visiting the decedent, had been staying at the residence since November 12, 2018. The decedent had no pertinent medical history. However, she developed flu-like symptoms approximately four days ago and was treated by a house call physician. She was administered a saline solution with vitamin mixture by a nurse. Decedent did not have a primary medical physician. And the last time she was believed to have been examined by a physician was approximately two years ago when she, quote, had blood work done. She also traveled to an unspecified location in Africa and returned home approximately one month ago. She did not have any health complaints at the time she returned from her trip. On the evening of November 14th, 2018, the decedent said, stated she felt better and received a deep tissue massage from her goddaughter. She then watched movies with family members and went to bed at approximately 23.30 hours. The following morning at approximately 8.30 hours, the goddaughter awoke beside the decedent and observed her to be sleeping. She did not attempt to rouse her. The goddaughter then left for work. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. So she like passed away right next to her and she woke up and saw her and didn't know she was, oof. At approximately 11.30 hours, the decedent was found unresponsive in her bed by her housemates. Uh, 911 was dialed and firefighters, paramedics from Engine 76 of the Los Angeles Fire Department responded to the scene. Firefighters and paramedics found the decedent lying supine in bed and, quote, rolled, unquote, her to a prone position to assess her backside. They then returned her to a supine position and death was determined at 1140 hours by paramedics Leon and Pugliosi. I spoke with Dr. Farzam at the scene and he related the following information. On 11 2018, the decedent contacted Dr. Farzam with complaints of sore throat lasting two days. He prescribed a Z pack at that time. On November 10th, her condition had not improved. A nurse responded to the residence at the above location and administered a saline solution with vitamins to the decedent. 
On November 12th, Dr. Farzam responded to the residents. Upon examination of the decedent, she was noted to have cold flu-like symptoms, including nasal congestion, sweats, mild cough, body aches, and sore throat. She also had a fever of 102 degrees Fahrenheit. Her blood pressure and oxygen results were within the normal limits. Influenza swab and strep tests were reportedly negative. His diagnosis for the decedent at the time was viral flu-like illness. He administered, administered an intramuscular injection of 60 milligrams of Toradol to the decedent's gluteal region. Okay, so we know that that wasn't related to the bruise on her bicep. Um, she was given another one liter saline vitamin solution. On November 13th, 2018, the decedent responded to Dr. Farzam that she had no appetite. She was administered another mixture of saline with vitamins by the nurse. So almost a week later, and she's still not feeling well. On the 14th, the decedent spoke with Dr. Farzam and reported her temperature was 96. Okay, so a week later, it seems like her temperature has gone down from 102 to... Okay, never mind. However, she also, okay, let me read that again. On November 14th, the decedent spoke with Dr. Farzan via the telephone and reported her temperature was 96 degrees Fahrenheit. However, she also noted that a, quote, mild streak of blood with phlegm, unquote, while she was coughing that day. She then received a massage and stated that she felt better. Despite feeling poorly, she continued to consume food and liquids, quote, a little bit throughout the period of her illness. Per Dr. Farzam, the decedent had no other pertinent medical or surgical history. She is not taking any prescription medications. She consumed alcohol on rare occasions and had no known history of drug abuse. Her family medical history was unknown. Scene description. The scene was a well-furnished, moderately well-organized master bedroom at the northeast end of a two-story multi-bedroom house in a residential area at the above location. A bed was noted along the south wall of the room. Multiple unopened or partially empty bottles of water, Pedialyte, and sports drinks were noticed on a nightstand, nightstand sorry, east of the bed and also on the dresser. Cups containing what appeared to be tea and water, a box marked azithromycin tablets, and a partially empty bottle of Tylenol were also noted on the nightstand east of the bed. Bowls containing what appeared to be tomato soup were noted in the room. A partially empty bottle of Zolpidem tartrate, which was not prescribed to the decedent, was noted in a drawer in the master bathroom. Zolpidem titrate. So I guess zolpi zolpidem titrate is a generic version of Ambien. The decedent was observed lying supine in the bed, partially on her right side, with her head to the south and feet to the north. The right side of her face was resting against a pillow. The right arm was bent with the right hand resting against her right cheek. The left arm was also bent and resting against her left side with her left hand near the right side of her abdomen. The right leg was slightly bent and resting on the bed. The left leg was extended straight out and resting over her right leg. Evidence. No evidence was collected for this case. Next, we have body examination. The decedent was an adult black woman who appeared to be the reported 47 years of age with black hair, brown eyes, and apparent natural teeth. Congestion was noted to the sclerae. Upon palpitation of the anterior neck region, a small amount of blood was noted is issuing from the right nair. A small amount of white frothy, frothy sorry, sputum was also noted issuing from the mouth. Oh, she had foam coming out of her mouth? What appeared to be a contusion was noted to the left upper arm. Multiple small red dots and what appeared to be a small contusion was noted to the right upper arm. What appeared to be small contusions were also noted to the bilateral posterior upper legs. 
Piercings were noted to the bilateral ears. Implants were noted to the bilateral breasts. A vertical line of discoloration was noted extending from the upper abdomen to the groin region. The back was unremarkable. No other scars, marks, or apparent signs of trauma were noted. Rigor was noted to be a three throughout the body. Lividity was fixed and appeared to be consistent with the decedent's position upon my arrival. Identification. Decedent was positively identified as Kimberly Antoinette Porter. Next of kin, they notified the son and other family members. Decedent was not married. I spoke with Detective Patike at the scene and he confirmed this information. Organ tissue procurement was not addressed with the family. And autopsy notification, it says no exam notification was requested. Signed, Michelle Lee and supervisor. And this was dated November 15th, 2018. And then it says... Um, Evidence of therapeutic intervention. So I remember reading uh, that she did say she got some IV liquids um, when she wasn't feeling so good. So it says there's a puncture wound of the posterior aspect of the right hand. There has not been post-mortem intervention for organ procurement. So they didn't take her organs, but that's probably like where they put the IV. Then this is where it says evidence of injury. And it says blunt trauma extremities. Okay. It's not under the therapeutic intervention. <coughs> and they're trying to kill me. No, I'm kidding. Oh, am I? I don't know. We'll see. We'll find out. <laughs> but it wasn't under the therapeutic intervention. It was under injury. But also, you know, I bruise like a peach. I mean, right now, as we speak, I have like bruises on my knees, on my shin. I have one at the bottom of my feet, which is weird. And I don't, half of them, I don't even know how I got them. Okay. I just bump into things. I'm clumsy. So I, I it wouldn't shock me if I had like a bruise on my bicep. So I'm not saying that, oh my God, someone punched her in the, in the arm, but you know, I didn't hear anyone report on it. Maybe they did. I just didn't find it. But to me, that was like, huh, interesting. And then it talks about um, incision, that she had certain incisions, but this looks like from surgery. Um, and then her neck, it said that it was fine. Like the bones are intact. There was no fractures, um, no hemorrhaging. Um, there was no facial hemorrhaging, no signs of any trauma. And then they talk about um, her chest and abdominal cavity, and it said that it was normal and there was nothing present and no adhesions. And then it said that um, nothing was injured in her bones. And then it also says here that um, her heart every, it weighed 325 grams and everything was fine. Um, it seems like everything was normal. It says like no discoloration, no abnormality, no defects, you know, things like that. And then for the respiratory system, it says scant secretions are found in the upper respiratory and lower bronchial passages. So that could be actually consistent with if she was having some sort of like pneumonia or whatever. And then, um, the visceral pleuri of the left lung shows diffuse, encasing left lower lung lobe for brinopurulent tan exudates. I know what all of this means. I'm just not going to tell you, but I, I know. Trust me. Um, I don't. See, I have to explain jokes like that because then people will think I'm serious and it's so annoying. Like sarcasm on YouTube, it's, you know, it doesn't go over well sometimes. Uh, the right lung show right lung. The right lung shows similar findings. Um, the mucosa is intact and pale. Okay, I won't like bore you with trying to pronounce this stuff, but I will show you all of this. So then it talks about um, how things are normal in the urinary system. It did say that it contains ten milliliters of urine that is positive for THC. I didn't hear that she had the THC in her system. And then it says that, um, talks about the genital system. Everything's normal. The, all the other like endocrine system is fine. Spleen is fine. Eyes. And then it talks about all the other organs, everything that's saying it's normal, unremarkable. And then it's evidence collection, no evidence collected. So I thought, okay, if they're already assuming that this isn't criminal, they probably wouldn't collect anything. They maybe didn't see anything. So that's that. 
And then it is talking about toxicology, saying samples of heart, blood, femoral blood, urine, and vitreous are submitted to the lab. So under radiology, it specifies that there is no evidence of injury contributing, contributing to or causing death. And witnesses, there were no witnesses. And then here is the summary and opinion. I want to read this. It says, this 47-year-old woman, Kimberly Antoinette Porter, died of low bar pneumonia. According to reports, Miss Porter was reportedly not feeling well with flu-like symptoms for approximately four days. She recently visited Africa, but returned approximately one month prior to death. On November 7th, 2018, she was experiencing throat pain and called a physician to request azithromycin. She was seen by a physician on November 12th, 2018, who noted she had cold slash flu-like symptoms, including nasal congestion, sweats, mild cough, body aches, and sore throat. She had a temperature of 102 degrees Fahrenheit with flu and strep throat testing being negative. She was given Toradol by intramuscular route and was given intravenous fluids. Ms. Porter called this physician the following day, November 13th, 2018, and explained she had no appetite. A nurse visited and gave her more saline solution with vitamins. The next day, November 14th, 2018, she complained to the physician of a streak of blood in her phlegm. She also received a massage. She was watching television with people and subsequently went to bed. She was later found unresponsive and was pronounced dead at the scene. Autopsy revealed fibrinopurulent effusions, which means infectious fluid, of the chest cavities and pleuritic, which is infection of the surface of the lungs. There was also evidence of low bar pneumonia, which is lung infection. Okay. Blood cultures were polymicrobial, see separate report, lung cultures, and did not grow bacteria, see separate report. And then it says nasopharyngeal swabs were negative for viruses, see separate report, postmortem toxicology was unremarkable, see separate report, vitreous chemistry was unremarkable, see so all these see separate reports are in here and I'll get to them. Low bar pneumonia is an infection of the lung caused by bacteria, immune cells invade air spaces where oxygen is taken in and this is accompanied with necrosis, death of cells. Pneumonia decreases the lung's ability to take in oxygen and over time it can cause sudden death. The manner of death is natural. And this is Odeci Ukpo, the senior Dep deputy med medical examiner. And this is signed January 25th, 2019. And she passed in November. So it was a couple months later. Here we have uh, that same doctor signing a thing that says that they performed a microscopic examination on January 4th, 2019. So couple weeks before, and this is talking about the lungs. So I'm going to leave this here for you guys to read because I'm going to butcher everything. And then here we have the diagram of the body, and it shows here that you have the puncture wound that is um, where the IVs were given, and that's where the bruise is. They're showing the three by one inch purple contusion on her arm, and then there's she has a scar on her abdomen, and this was dated on the 16th. So this was like right when she passed. Um, so again, not sure where that bruise could have come from. Could be something, could be nothing. And then here we have the external exam. And I'll put this up here. You guys can look through it. There's a couple of notes on here. And this was on the 16th. And now we have the medical report. So this shows that um, basically who did what. And next we're going to have the results of the toxicology, which is here. Um, and it's showing that she had no alcohol in her system, no barbiturates, no cocaine, no fentanyl, no meth, no MDMA, no opiates, codeine, morphine, no opiates, hydrocodone, hydromorphine, no phenocyclidine, and basic drugs, it says ND, which means not detected, and 
the electrolytes and glucose, it was, it says done. So here there's no mention of the THC in the toxicology. However, in the urine part of the autopsy, it did say that she had THC. So then we've got here the patient test result report, test and A records done. Oh, this maybe is that glucose thing. And then here we have the um, Department of Pathology, bacteri bacteriology. And we have another page again of the same bacteriology thing. And this one is talking um, medical jargon. I'm guessing this is like the bacteria that they found on her lungs where they were saying that it was infected and what caused her death. Test results from the multiplex respiratory panel, PCR with reflex, nasal pharyngeal swab. So they tested her for adenovirus, not detected, coronavirus 229E, coronavirus HKU1, coronavirus NL63, coronavirus OC43. All of these were not detected. You know, I heard people say, like, maybe she was one of the first cases of COVID. I really heard a lot of people mention that. I wonder if that was something. I don't know. Just thought I'd mention that. And then also they tested her. All of these are not detected. They tested her for human metanumovirus, human rhinovirus, enterovirus, influenza A, influenza B, parainfluenza virus 1, parainfluenza virus 2, and parainfluenzal, the influenzal, influenza, I'm an influenzal. Um, stu stupid, shut up, shut the fuck up. And it were, they were all not detected. The PCR test with reflux, which tested all the same things. And it's showing here that they're also all not detected, which I'll show you the page. You can look at this. That is the entire, um, autopsy. And I am surprised by the contusions. And the bruising, it said it was on her arms and on the back of her legs. So that's a little bit odd. And then other than that, though, I mean, I'm curious what you guys think. I don't know, right? I don't, I'm not an expert in this, but I, I thought this was useful information to add to the conversation. And so hopefully this was somehow informative for you. And anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.